Hey, it's Random Code here, and today we're going to discuss my preferred architecture, more or less, in a Spring Boot application. And I am talking about a controller service repository setup. And in this case, I have a showcase of how I would set up a very bare bones project with a simple example. And this is actually not going to be running because we don't have a database set up, but I'm just going to showcase to go through all our elements. And of course, there's going to be a link in the description where you can actually have a look at a GitHub repository to actually go through this yourself, because there's actually quite a few different components, more or less. So as mentioned, this is, at least I would call it, a controller service repository pattern architecture, depending on who you ask. And as a base setup, I would have like four packages. I would have my API, which is going to be containing my controller part, which is going to be the one that's going to actually be the REST endpoint of our Spring Boot application. We then have a persistence, which is going to handle our repository, so our connection to the database. And a service package, which will handle all the manipulating of data and all like the domain logic. So starting from the bottom up, Inside persistence, I would have a repository and an entity package, where we inside my entity package have a user class, where this user class will be matching one-to-one -one a table in a relational database. So in this example, we have a very simple user class, having some auto-generated ID, a name, a last name, and an age. And these will then be matching exactly the setup in the database. And because it's annotated with entity and matching the database, we can then use a user repository. More specifically, I like to use the JPA repository, annotated with add repository, and then taking in a parameter of this repository class. It's going to be using the user entity matching a table in the database with an ID of type long. And what this then allows us to do is either create like custom SQL queries, but also use this Spring JPA functionality allowing us to create queries like this by simply doing find first by ID. And it automatically knows that it needs to look inside our user table and extract by ID. So this makes the process a bit simpler and we actually allow Spring Boot to handle some of the functionality. Other things to note, an data repository and it's going to be an interface. Then next layer, more or less, would be our service layer, where in this case I would have a simple user service this user service then have a private final user repository instance object. And note we are auto wiring, so we are dependency injecting our user repository using Spring Boot. And this is constructor injection. And one thing to note, I saw it in a comment once, is that I have this auto wired on the constructor, which in the newer of which actually in the newer version of Spring Boot is unnecessary, but I like it because I think it makes it very clear. At least when working at a team, that this is auto wired, so we are dependency injecting our user repository using Spring Boot. But once again, this could be removed and wouldn't change anything. We then would, for a very simple example of just getting a user by ID, have a user request or get user by get user DTO by ID, which then simply takes in a long ID, calls our repository, and then note we would have a user DTO as we have actually returning because our user entity is matching the exact state of the database. We then might also, this is kind of optional, but I like to use these O's to very clearly showcase what data we would actually like to return in our given endpoint. So what we in this very, very simple showcase should do, we have our user entity from our database. It's retrieved using our GPA query. We then return a user request DCO using a builder, and then simply the main difference in this case, again, it's very simple, but our user entity contains an ID, name, last name, and an age, but we would only like to return the name and the last name. So we're only returning these two attributes. So we extract them from our entity, creating our user request ETO, which is kind of like our next element inside our API area, which then have only the elements we'd actually like to return. So as mentioned, we then have our API area, having our controller and our DTO. DTO, simply a data request or data transfer object. So very clearly, what are we actually returning? Our controller, we then again have a auto-wired service 
or user service in this case. Again, construct injection, also why it's not needed, but I like it. We then have our REST controller. Annotated REST controller, we define the base mapping for all our endpoints inside this REST controller. And then this specific get mapping, so this specific get mapping is going to be slash users slash ID. And then take a variable, our long ID passed through our URL, and it then return a response entity. So just an entity defining the status with a data object, in this case, our user request TCO, which is then retrieved from our service. So we're going through our repository, get the entity from the database, through our service, modify the object as needed for the controller, which then returns TCO. And one last folder I haven't mentioned yet, but in this case, it's not very necessary. But sometimes we might need to do a lot of modifications from our entity to our request DCO, and then we might use some kind of model, which more or less is just some kind of domain object, which is used to manipulate data. In this case, it's very unnecessary, but I just want to add it to have it here to know that sometimes it might be easier having these like extra objects. In this case, it's also not necessary to have a use as well, but, but we might have some kind of like helper models to help with different kind of domain logic. In this case, again, it's not very necessary. But just to sum up, this is the basis of our controller, service repository, pattern, architect, and Spring Boot. And one thing to note, this is like the lowest part of the architecture. And like a backend, we might have this in either a single service, we might have it in a monolith, so in a larger system. Again, it, this becomes a bit bloated because if we have multiple controllers, we'd add them inside controller into service, so we'd end up having both a user controller, maybe a auth controller, money controller, login controller, I don't know, but we would just add them inside each of the repositories, so at some point it's going to be a bit bloated. This architecture might also be a bit more proper in some kind of like a microservice. We have a microservice with one path of controller service repository or some kind of component setup using Java. However, I think it's still very good to have a basic understanding of this kind of like three layer architecture of our controller, assistance and service. So if you enjoyed this showcase of how we should or could structure our basic Spring Boot application, please leave a like and subscribe and I wish you all a wonderful